New York City. People think of Times Square. Yellow taxi cabs, Radio City, the subway, street vendors. But did you know New York used to be known for its oysters? More than a century ago, New York City was known as the oyster capital of the world. Since then, the oyster population declined. Today, scientists are working on bringing them back. Dr. James Savino is a marine scientist and college professor working on oyster habitat restoration. What oysters do is they filter the water, filter bacteria, filter sediment to use for their shell. You can take a bucket of dirty water and put clams and oysters and mussels in them, and within 28 to 48 hours, it could potentially be clear. Oysters do not only filter water, they also help prevent coastal erosion. One of the most key components to habitat restoration and preservation of habitat is having these foundational species here that add to the integrity of the coastline. As the tides change, you'd be increasing and intensifying the level of erosion. So this actually adds to the integrity and the, and the strength of the coastal zones. Marine life, organisms such as these, will provide a sort of anchor to the coastal zone, thereby preventing from future erosional problems that take place on many coastlines throughout the northeast, southeast, all over the world. On the other side of town, along the Hudson River, the River Project uses oysters to teach local ecology. J.T. Bowen manages the oyster gardening program. This cage is basically uh, a float cage for the oysters. People think of reefs and they think of coral reefs and you don't really think of oyster reefs, but it's basically a similar idea. Oysters settle on top of each other, so larvae will find other oysters and then they grow, and they grow in groups and aggregates. That's how oysters form oyster reefs. Oyster reefs provide a home for many organisms, such as epifauna. Which are animals that don't move, but live on top of structure. Here's some sponge and encrusting tunicates. These calcium-like tubes here are tube worms, and these kind of grape-looking things are called sea squirts, which are a filter feeder. Then there's some different types of algae, barnacles, so other kinds of filter feeders. And then usually people will find, you know, different kinds of small fish and crabs and other invertebrates that'll use the cage's habitat. One of the River Project's short-term goals is to form a small reef off of Tribeca in Lower West Manhattan. It might be a suitable place for oyster reef for a pilot study, but then a long-term goal would be to create oyster reefs all over, basically. Back at College Point, Dr. Savino is also growing oysters. What we're doing is stimulating the growth of the oysters using solar energy. It's called mineral accretion. When you transplant baby oysters onto the metal and you attach an anode and a cathode from the solar panels, it speeds up and accelerates the growth of calcium carbonate because there are natural calcium ions in seawater. So when you put a charge in seawater, low voltage, you're actually accelerating the growth of limestone. And if you put oysters on top of the metal that has a charge, it'll help speed their shell growth. And what we want to compare, what we're going to be hopefully doing at Columbia, is comparing if these oysters are healthier. Can they fight off pathogens or viral infections better because they're getting an electric charge? Our goal is to replenish all of the oyster and mussel reefs from uh, South Carolina up to New York. But we want to start here. That's the vision, to start here. For Science Friday in New York, I'm Ma Shuman.